Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna learn how to use the new selective color tool in Premiere Pro, better known as the hue and saturation curves. I'll try to keep this on a short video. I have selected a few clips that we can play around and hopefully by the end of the tutorial, you'll be able to understand how to use this very powerful tool. The hue and saturation curves in Premiere Pro has five sections or five tabs. Hue versus saturation, hue versus hue, hue versus luma, luma versus saturation, and saturation versus saturation. Okay, let's head over to Premiere Pro. Okay, now in Premiere, the first tool we're gonna see today is called hue versus saturation. And I have a selected clip here that you can see here, and we're gonna play around a bit with it and uh, hopefully this one will be a uh, very self-explanatory and very easy to understand. The curve that relates to that clip is this one. So hue versus saturation. With this tool, you can select a specific color range and change its saturation. Very, very simple. So we're gonna use the color picker to select the grass. Once you click in the selected color you want to modify or change the saturation, the tool will create three nodes. The middle node is the color you've selected and the other two nodes work to prevent the further modification of the colors beyond those points. So the center node, if I pull it down, it will change the saturation on that specific color. If you go down, saturation goes down and if you pull up, saturation goes up. There's a few ways you can you could use this tool. Uh, you can, for example, change the color of a, a specific section of your image and this might be very a uh, cool and creative tool. For example, if I decide that this grass is a bit too saturated for the overall color uh, of, of my image, I'll go with my color picker, select the grass, and I'll probably lower saturation just a tiny bit. So then the image stays more uniformly uh, saturated. So in my opinion, it might look better. Sometimes if the selection is not as good as we wanted it to be and and you make very drastic changes you'll see that the colors are not you're not fully selecting all the greens w within the image so a solution for that will be to extend the selection of the color so if you extend the outside nodes you can further include more from the yellow tones all the way to the greens, almost touching the, the blue tones. So that will give you sometimes a cleaner selection uh, if, if that's what you're looking for. You know, if, if your selection is not fully there, you can extend the nodes outside to include a bit more of the neighboring colors and, and that, you know, will give you a better result in, in your selection. You don't need to use the color picker all the time. If you know that you're looking to change a yellow color, you can kind of eyeball it and go yellow, create three nodes and then push down and see that kind of selected that yellow. I would say the best way it's probably to use the color picker and then further modify it if you need it by hand. But the color picker kind of tends to work um, very well on its own and it will give you a uh, good results. So let's jump to the second one, hue versus hue. So this one is a very powerful tool also. And we can see the curve here, hue versus hue. In this case, this curve changes the hue of a color range. So it changes the color of a color range. So if we go and move the whole curve up and down you'll see that all the colors are shifting and they're shifting with this color bar so from green to yellow to red to purple so it changes every single color in the image so we're going to double click to delete what we've done and in this case i'm going to make a selection but this one is a tricky one and you'll see in a second why this one is a tricky one i'm going to select the shirt the girl is wearing and it's purple. That color is a bit tricky because it has a bit of red and her hair is actually touching a lot of the shirt. So this selection uh, is gonna be a bit complicated, but you can see 
how uh, you know extending the boundaries of the tool will allow you to make further selections of colors that are neighboring to the color you want to select. In this case, we're gonna go and try to change the hue of her shirt. So you can see that the, the color selection is kind of working. But in her hair, you can see the mask or, or the, the color selection not working fully. So in this case, when where you have another object touching the object you're trying to select or surrounding the, the, the color you're trying to select, you might need to extend your selection to include the colors nearby so your selection is better uh, defined. So see, if we go to blue, you can actually see it. See, there's a lot of purple that we are still not selecting. So you should probably extend a little bit more. Is this going to the blues? No, this is going to this. Yeah, there we go. So in this case, to make a better selection, I actually had to shift and create an extra point. So let's do that again. So make the first selection with the eyedropper, which is the center color, which is kind of purplish blue. But I'm gonna actually extend my selection a little bit here and I'm gonna drag up, drag up and that's changing her shirt color a little bit more. There we go. So in, in this case, the, the tool works correctly and it also depends on if you're actually working in 10-bit video or 8-bit video the more color information your video has the more this tool can do for you uh, that's for all of them but in this specific case a uh, hue versus hue it's a uh, it, it's the image the, the software is trying to recognize a section of base and the color uh, so the software is trying to recognize a section of your image based on the hue value it has. So obviously a higher bit depth image will have more color information for the tool to work in. So 8-bit video, this tool is going to be limited by your color uh, information. So we can change the color to pink if we wanted to. So basically this tool changes the hue of a color range within your image. So let's move on to the next one, hue versus luma. So basically this tool will allow you to change the brightness value of a color within your image. So in this case, uh, I've selected this image obviously because it has uh, uh, this orange uh, section which is kind of quite different than the rest. So we're gonna go again, click eyedrop color picker and you're gonna go select the color you want to select and the curves gives me these three points again and I'm gonna get the center one and move it a bit higher and you can see it's getting the beak of the swan brighter and brighter again depending on the color depth of your image this might work better or worse if you're working in 8-bit you're gonna have uh, troubles with this one because you can actually see the outline of the color. See, if, if I go down, you can actually see the like the pixelation. So you need to be careful with this tool, especially when working with 8-bit video. Uh, this tool is gonna probably wreck your image and you need to account for the fact that this is in motion. So the tool is trying to constantly, while in motion, select that color selection so if you're working with 8-bit video it's going to be this is 10-bit video and it's still kind of you know not working correctly but you probably shouldn't use this tool so exaggerated you're going to try to try to use this tool to fix small issues that you might uh, encounter within your image so i'm going to go again select with the eyedrop tool and i'm going to go just a tiny bit maybe brighten the beak a little bit so the eye goes to that section and I'm gonna actually expand my selection a little bit here and expand my selection a little bit here so I'm just gonna go and zoom again to that yeah that's a better selection 
and then we can play that yeah that looks better so see by playing with the nodes next to the node of your color and expanding them you include more colors so basically making the gradient of selection uh, the, the curve of the of the selection uh, a bit softer and including a bit more colors that might be neighboring the color you want to, to select so if I go this way I darken the beak and if I go this way I brighten the beak obviously you don't want to go crazy because you'll dis basically destroy the image so this tool use it maybe uh, with caution uh, and it, it might give you kind of good results for example if you had a person and, uh, and an interview scenario and the interview uh, your lighting wasn't as good as you wanted maybe you want to just brighten up the skin tones that's that would be probably an easy uh, selection to make with this tool you select the skin tones you brighten them up a little bit and you're good to go obviously use the tool very gently because you will destroy your image if you're just going over the top with it luma versus saturation changes the saturation of elements based on their luminance in this graph the darker parts of the image are to the left and the brighter part of the images are to the right this one is not like the other graphs that are color based this is actually like a normal curve so dark areas to the left bright areas to the right so how are we gonna see this the easiest way for me to show you this is creating two dots this is for the dark areas this is for the bright areas and if I push this one up I'm changing the saturation on the highlight so going up is more saturation going down is less saturation this node will effectively saturate more the highlights and this node will effectively desaturate the lowlights or the shadows so you could do the opposite of that you could put more saturation in the shadows and take the saturation away in the highlights depending on your scene you might want to change the saturation uh, only for example in this sunset I would say maybe if we had a little bit more color in the sunset it might work better so I'm gonna do this I'm, I want to only affect the highlights not the midtones not the shadows and I'm just gonna go and saturate them a little bit more and push this way so it's only affecting the sky so you can see how this tool could become a very powerful tool if you play around with it you'll understand what it does and it might come handy in one of your scenes one of your shots uh, where you need to put a bit more saturation to a specific luminance range within your image so we'll move on to the next one saturation versus saturation this curve is a bit tricky to understand but it basically changes the saturation of a section of your image based on its current saturation so I have this simple example here I'm gonna use a color picker to select a color within my image it's gonna create my three nodes and I'm gonna drag down to desaturate that a specific color or drag up to saturate that a specific color based on its current saturation value the change might not be too noticeable in this case so I'm going to expand again the range of my color selection and maybe I'll do another node so you can see that all the red sections within my image are now heavily saturated so if I go the other way you'll see that most of the red in my image is now desaturated based on its saturation value and not the color I would say I probably won't be using this tool that much uh, there's other ways of selecting a color and changing its uh, saturation value and they might seem a bit easier but this tool is here it might come handy for some of you uh, and now that you know how it works then you can potentially use it uh, in any of your projects in the future I think the color tool uh, in Premiere Pro has been uh, upscaled over the last few years 
and it's it's now a bit more powerful and although it's not DaVinci Resolve you could certainly do way more complex a uh, color correction work within Premiere now than what you were able to do in the past so that's it for today simple video short concise Premiere Pro very powerful editing software and the color tool it's now a bit more efficient so you can do more complicated things and hopefully with this simple tutorial you now understand how to use the hue and saturation curves within Premiere Pro. Thanks for watching, see ya in the next video.